let's move on to our next article from theregister.com. Version 252 of System uh, System D. D. I know, I always say that one wrong, because I look at it and think... Just think Tenacious D. I think it's like Doctor Lady, like System <laughs> MD. All right, so System version 52 D. of System D, as expected, locks down the Linux boot process. Uh, why would they do that? So, uh, you know, this is one that if, if you just kind of glance at the headline, it sounds like something bad. It's actually a good thing. Well, they got COVID. I guess something it's just back like off COVID all through Linux. Yeah. We're like, we got to lock down. <laughs> got a zero boot process. Uh, it, it certainly does lock things down. Um, you might remember when UEFI BIOS was really kind of picking up steam and uh, or just the EFI bootloader in general, where they could do digitally signed bootloaders and digitally signed kernels for operating systems to ensure that malware operators couldn't get in and put hooks underneath the the kernel. Photon OS. That's that's the name of the VMware. <laughs> I love that. Ten minutes later. <laughs> I love how like that neuron just fired. I just started talking about kernels and immediately yeah, remembered Photon OS. It. Uh, <laughs> all right, so can we edit that into <laughs> earlier? Yeah. yeah. Back on track. Um, so you know, you can do digitally signed kernels, digitally signed bootloaders, and so if you got bootloader malware. It's impossible for antivirus to see that because it loads before the AV, so it can hide itself. And, and now you've got like the early root kits, just really, really hard to detect. So EFI was designed to fix that. But a lot of people got worried about it. Like, oh, is that going to kill open source? Can we not have open source OSs if they have to be digitally signed? And somebody like Microsoft or Lenovo controls the keys. Is that going to be a problem? Turned out to not be a big deal at all. And it, it's easy to get your operating system signed. But with System D 252, They've rolled out a new feature that's actually really cool, where not only is the kernel digitally signed, but the whole init process is signed as well. And they did that by rolling them together. They've combined the init RD, or just the init system, the initialization system, with the kernel, rolled it all into one big file that can now be digitally signed. And so that's really giving you like a fully trusted boot environment when your OS starts. Now, you can still have malware like crazy after you load up, right? That's your own problem. But you can trust the operating system at that point because it's, it's been digitally signed and is tamper resistant. Okay, I got a question then. So I'm thinking boot process, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I make custom things to do in the boot process. Can I can I modify the what goes on during boot and then still work or... Is there yeah. like a lot of hoops you got to jump through? Like how's so, that work? You know, with System D, you never actually modify your init anymore. Okay. You you modify uh, targets or units. Yeah. So you have System D units, which are just text files that define what you want to happen when the system starts. And it might be things like mounting storage, opening network sockets, starting timers, cron jobs, all that right. stuff. You still have full control over that. You can you can customize what the init is doing. You just can't customize the init, the initialization process itself. That's now locked in with the kernel and secured. Now, if I was an attacker and I wanted to hide what I was doing, modifying the init process is a super sneaky way to do that because you could have a digitally signed kernel that you can't tamper with, but if the init binary is not signed, you could put a malicious one in that ran all sorts of tasks in the background that nobody knew about. Init runs as a system service, so it would have full access to the system. And you could mask everything you do. How long before we are reading the article that says accidentally left open or whatever, and somebody gained access to that, and now the digital signatures are, you know, even though they're legit, they've been compromised. The you know, we read about that kind of stuff from happening all the could time. Happen. It could happen. It could happen. I'm just saying yeah. it's going to. Don't get me that. Yep. I just think that it will. <laughs> and you know, revoking a certificate for something that's effectively a hardware check is really hard to yeah. do. Uh, I mean, you can revoke the certificate, but it's hard to update systems right. to be able to, to reflect that. So it, it would be a challenge. It could happen. Mm. Yeah. Nightmare scenario. But I think it's a neat security feature. I think some people are scared of it. Uh, it's it's an optional thing right now. Uh, System D version 252 is not in any of the currently supported versions of Linux. So like the, the latest version of Ubuntu, uh, RHEL... To be in, you know, none of them have 252 yet, but probably, probably this time next year we'll start to see it pop up in our, our distros. Cool. If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.